I'm Dan Drake. This is Front Up on Geno TV and Channel 99. Our guest today is one of the candidates for Tim Madden's seat in the state legislature, Ewell Hopkins of Oak Bluffs. Welcome, Ewell. Thank you so much. Nice to have you with us. It's good to be here. Um, what brings you to this race? Um, a, a sense of uh, commitment to the district, uh, passion to serve, mm -hmm. and a need to offer the electorate a uh, truly alternative to how we work and relate to uh, state government. What, what is the experience that you bring to your candidacy and ultimately to the job if you're elected? I guess not, not in a sense of priority. It's 20 years living in the district, raising a family of three, uh, married to a wonderful woman um, who also has run a small business mm -hmm. in the district, a commitment to service, um, an elected member of the Oak Bluffs Planning Board, the uh, president of the Democratic Party um, on Martha's Vineyard and the chair of the Democratic Town Committee. Um, you know, it, it's interesting when you ask that question. I've served on numerous boards. I've run a nonprofit. Um, I got involved in public service back in the early 80s when I uh, grew up in Framingham. Um, but I think we all give in different ways. Uh, those are just examples of how I've given. But I, I believe overarching all of it, the, the commitment to be of service to others is the qualification I'm most proud of in terms of why I'm running for mm -hmm. office. All right. Um, there are, uh, there's a, this is a diverse di district. It's about half of Falmouth, including Woods Hole, the western half of Falmouth, the six towns on Martha's Vineyard and Dukes County, mm -hmm. um, and the town of Nantucket, which is uh, uh, probably 20% of the electorate in your district. Um, what are the significant issues of, or, and your priorities of, for issues affecting the entire district? There's three. Um, first and foremost, we don't know each other. Um, we, we work at odds with one another far more than we believe we do. Um, there are many parallel conversations that take place with uh, state government mm -hmm. and federal government. And I believe more than ever, we need to have a facilitated process of bringing us together. Um, until we can speak in a more unified voice, I think our voice is diffused at a state and federal level. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a, a, a central theme to my candidacy. It's to take what Representative Madden has done and truly understanding the district and get the district to know each other. On, on top of that, um, we have a very fragile ecosystem. And in many districts, it's a real challenge to be as environmentally sensitive as I am mm -hmm. because the, you're at odds with business and other concerns. But in our district, it's very unique that the, the, the underlying economic engine is, is indebitably connected to uh, the environment. So being an environmentalist is really a, an asset in this district, and I'm, I'm excited that that's a theme. And then finally, um, we have a, a very broad human condition. We have many challenges um, based on people's realities, and we're not effectively advocating the needs of many people in our district. Because, in my opinion, we're very concerned about its impact on tourism and our economic engine. Mm -hmm. People don't want to understand, truly, the degree of difficulty that many of us face. Give us a couple of examples. Well, I mean, you don't come on vacation to come to a community that's suffering homeless issues, that's suffering domestic violence, that's suffering uh, controlled substance abuse. Um, all of those issues are, are factors that we have to deal with. The challenge is, how do we deal with them in an effective way and not undermine you know, the sense of beauty of this community. And, and I have a lot of ideas of how you do that. Um, but there's that inherent conflict of, if you make a lot of noise about the challenges we're facing, you may undermine what's beautiful and what attracts people here. So you have to be cognizant of both of those factors as you advocate. And I think it calls for a different approach to really speaking up for those who need a voice in our district. What about the parts of the district, Nantucket for example, mm -hmm. um, are there some issues that you see that just affect Nantucket or just affect the vineyard or just affect Falmouth? Absolutely not. I, I can't find an issue that is unique to some part of the district that doesn't impact the other. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, we have a, a major issue between contention between Falmouth and the vineyard towns on our relationship with the steamship. And a lot of that is because we haven't really analyzed what we're shipping back and forth and we're not you know responsible citizens with our organic waste we haven't figured out how to do large-scale composting 
Nantucket has. Mm -hmm. um, Nantucket is a, an example of a model. Without a lot of pain. Without a lot of pain, uh, expense, but, yeah. but you know, you're, you're taking on that task. Mm -hmm. um, and you've, I believe you've done a phenomenal job. You have water quality issues. We have water quality issues. Um, you have uh, the, the problems with having a diverse community of people and housing those people and what the challenges are. And it's not always based on economics. You, we have an aging population across the district that has very unique needs. And they're not unique to the district, but they're unique to the elderly population. So I look at the challenges within the district and I, I find it very challenging to point out something that's really unique to one aspect or the other. And let's what not forget- What about distance? Doesn't distance have an impact? Well, well distance has an impact, but it's, it's on the same trajectory of issues. When you're trying to address transportation issues, as an example, you don't have a year-round public transportation system with your busing system. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, but it's willfully inadequate uh, on the vineyard. Um, so we can, we can come together on, you know, what is the role of government when it comes to public transportation and where we're going with that. Um, we all, we both attract a lot of vacationers that want to cycle and want to bike. You're, you have classifications of bike friendly status that I envy. We need to improve that. So I believe there's so many lessons learned back and forth. And let's not forget Cuddyhunk. When we mm -hmm. go over to the town of Gosnold, they have major issues on how they how produce. People, how many people live on Cuddyhunk? A 15 year round, 75 registered voters and numerous who vacation there. Mm -hmm. The challenge with Cuddyhunk is the environmental impact of that summer community and what it does to our shared water system. Mm -hmm. um, and also the fact that they have significant costs in producing electricity and producing energy. So from an, going back to that environmental theme, there are many challenges that affect Cuddyhunk that impact all of us that mm -hmm. we have to work better on in terms of the district and how we work together. Um, if you are elected, how do you propose to uh, stay in touch with this far-flung constituency? Well, first and foremost, my theme of inter-district communications speaks to how I'm going to do that. I, I believe the default should be being in district, having in-district conversations and building consensus within the district versus focusing on the mechanics of Beacon Hill and how Beacon Hill works. Mm -hmm. So in the past, we've had a focus where much of the conversation has been on how do we navigate through the processes that have been established in Boston. My focus is to have regular and predictable, accessible office hours throughout the district. That the default of the state rep will be to be in district, not to be in Boston. So the, the short answer to your question is accessibility. It's literally being on the ground in a predictable manner so that any constituent can walk in with or without an appointment and have access to their state rep in a predictable manner. Um, what, is, what, is the, what can the legislature do on some of these issues, such as the housing or the water quality issues? What, what options are available to the legislature? Let's take housing, for example. We all know that there's a housing crisis of one degree or another mm -hmm. across the district. Um, what can the legislature do? Well, first of all, we have been um, uh, subjected to a, a very heated discussion around uh, zoning reform and the Omnibus uh, Act and where we're going to go with getting the Commonwealth of Massachusetts mm -hmm. up to speed on planning reform. Uh, that's a classic example of what we need to embrace. We also need to look at where regionalization makes sense, where when individual municipalities are trying to tackle these issues, where there's more efficiency in working together from a regional perspective. So from a legislative point of view, I think we need to look at how we establish the decision-making process. I believe there are many decisions that are not allowed to be made at a municipality level that should be brought down. Um, Such a, can you give us some Weekly example? rentals as an example. Mm -hmm. Since the Airbnb phenomena has really become a real factor mm -hmm. in urban settings, what we have been talking about for decades is that there's this unregulated economic engine in our midst mm -hmm. that is having severe impact depending on who you talk to but we would all agree severe impact on all of our lives and yet we can't make local decisions that to me is a classic example of something that should be brought down to the local level mm -hmm. so that we can determine what level of regulation we should have on weekly rentals if any how we earmark the resulting revenues mm -hmm. so that they don't just go into a general fund and, and how that is embraced by community. That to me is a classic mm -hmm. example of where the legislator branch can say, the decision making could be better made 
at a local level than at a state level. But hasn't the legislature just uh, passed a bill, or certainly was considering a bill at the end of its term, that basically would mandate certain zoning? Um, on uh, on communities exactly in contrast to what I just described right. in contrast to bringing it to a local level in contrast to trying to find uh, a model that fits all from across the entire mm -hmm. Commonwealth to looking at the uniquenesses within the district exactly in contrast mm -hmm. to what I'm describing what about water quality what, what can the uh, and shellfish and so forth what can the uh, legislature do in that arena? Well, we have water quality. We're looking at two different areas. We're talking about the water that's coming in and the water that's going out. We have a major wastewater issue that we have to address. Right. And we have to look at the impact of nitrogen loading. And we have to look at what is the the relevance of sewering. And I think we have to be open to other advanced technologies um, independent of sewering to look at. On the front end, with water quality, water usage, we need to implement I think more comprehensive uh, water usage guidelines and mm -hmm. restrictions. We don't have conservation measures in place. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's what we need to be doing with water on both ends of the scale. Um, getting back to the water quality in terms of, of the, the seawater around us, the oceans, our harbors, so forth. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's anything that the legislature can do in that arena to uh, help improve the situation? Almost oh, definitely. They're, they're, that to me is a classic example of where working on a regional basis, not on just a municipality basis. Water doesn't know municipal borders. So to think that individual towns, remember on the vineyard, we're talking six towns. Right. You can't find the vineyard once you get off the boat. You're in one of six individual towns. So there's reasons why we need to be looking at a more a more intimate relationship with the state when we're tackling issues like environmental mm -hmm. concerns that don't know municipal b boundaries. You mentioned shellfish earlier. Um, shellfish play a, a very key role, not only in a quality of life, not only in uh, sustaining uh, occupation, because there's a recreational component, there's a commercial component, but then there's a water quality component. And all of those conversations need to come together in terms of what our priorities mm -hmm. are. And that goes back to what I was alluding to earlier. Those conversations have to happen at the district level. What is the, what is the ultimate goal of our shell fishing community and what are we looking to do? Most of the legislators, 160 of them in the, in the general court or, or assembly, uh, come from landlocked uh, districts. Do they really care? Do they really give a hoot about the uh, water quality issues that the Cape Towns and the North Shore Towns face? I think they do and the reason why is because I believe we are the underlying economic engine for the Commonwealth. When you look at how the Commonwealth on a state level is driving tourism as a new economic engine, where are the key components? Where do people come from around the world when they come to Massachusetts? They come to the Cape and Islands and they go to the Berkshires and they go to Cape Ann. So the idea that what we do doesn't impact the entire state is naive. And I believe that most legislators know that getting people into the Commonwealth, whether they're going to our academic institutions, whether they're going into new high technology around Route 128, they're all attracted to our beautiful coastal lines. And I believe that the Cape and Islands drives a lot of that. Uh, before I ask you to wrap up, one last question. Uh, there's a perception here, among some of us anyway, that the legislature views Nantucket a bit as a rich spoiled uh, kid um, who really isn't worthy of their attention. Do you think mm -hmm. that's true? And if it is true, how do we do something about that perception? Well, I think uh, some of that perception is our own doing. I think we experience the same thing on the vineyard. I don't think we have effectively um, articulated what I mentioned earlier, the true human condition, the full spectrum. Uh, I think we're at odds with ourselves in terms of how much do we expose our challenges. I mean, there are many people who will give you the taglines and give you the individual, the individual examples as I did earlier, but th the fact still remains that the human condition on the islands and Cape and Islands is consistent throughout the entire state. And when we paint a picture that's different than that, you know, we suffer the effects of that. So I believe that we need a legislative body that understands that what the human condition is here is consistent with the rest of the state. 
when we talk about the opiate crisis, we're not talking about Brockton and Lynn. We're talking about Nantucket and Oak Bluffs and West Tisbury. And until we understand that what is impacting the entire state is impacting us, I don't think we're going to resolve it. Now, we don't have time to get into it, right. but I believe there are ways to truly advocate for the human condition in this district without scaring people away. And I look forward to talking to voters more about how you do just that. What would you like the voters to remember about you when they go into the polls a week from Thursday? That you truly have an option of someone who wants to be of service, someone who is committed to this district, someone who has a demonstrated history of being integrated in this community, and absolutely loves what this district represents. And for myself, that's, that's very encouraging, and that's who I am. Ewell Hopkins, thank you so much, and good luck to you. Thank you.